Welcome, Father Frank Pavone, um, to the studio space here where we can talk about the pro-life work and, and just how it relates to the, the pro-life message in some of the symbolism and, um, and that. So for today, I thought, Father Frank, this is a painting called Agony. Right. Okay. Um, I thought we could, we could t go through each character just in themselves and how they relate to each other in their, you know, their surroundings. Yes. Well, so. this is very profound. You know, I, I, we've talked about this painting mm -hmm. with one another. And, you know, it's, this is one of those things, you know, it's a high quality work when each time you look at it, you get more insight, more ideas. So, mm -hmm. so yes, let's do exactly okay. that. Yeah. Okay. Now, I know that you are an expert in the pro-life movement. And you spent your entire priesthood working tirelessly to bring an end to abortion. Um, even though we strive to bring a culture of life and, um, and try to change hearts and minds to the understanding that it's wrong to kill a child in abortion, there's a multitude of reasons that a woman would be driven to this choice to make this sad decision. I remember um, we were at a, a late-term abortion mill and I was watching a woman walk up the driveway to the door and some of us were there, some of them were you know calling out to her and begging her but she had her head bent as low as it could go and basically one foot was just just dragging one foot in front of the other yes. to make it to that door. Yes, so. yes. You've captured that on the face of this of this mother, and we, of course we see her unborn child there, the child who is invisible to yeah. to uh, the world, mm -hmm. uh, but you see in that face the sad despair. It's almost like she's walking like a zombie mm -hmm. or like a robot. Mm -hmm. And people like our our own our own pastoral associate, uh, Dr. Teresa Burke, mm -hmm. psychologist herself, founder of Rachel's Vineyard, mm -hmm. expert in in post-abortion uh, trauma. Mm -hmm. She will say that when the mother gets to this stage where she's actually walking inside the abortion facility or sitting there in the waiting room, she at that point is she's on automatic pilot. Mm -hmm. She is like in a trance. She has she's given into the despair that uh, this is something that. She knows is bad, she knows is wrong, she doesn't want to do, but she sees no other choice, which is, of course, the cruel irony of the slogan, freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. They don't get abortions because of freedom of choice. Exactly. They get it because they feel they have no freedom and no choice. So you've really you know, captured well in her, she's like staring into nowhere, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and the tears are already coming down her face. The baby's still within her, but she's on this path of, of, of despair, mm -hmm. which leads to destruction. That's right. That's right, and and that brings us to the the baby. Now, in art, <coughs> we can express um, the invisible, and so the child within her womb, shown through her dress here, yes, is in the fetal position, and yes. he's facing towards our Lord. Facing towards our Lord, yeah, yeah beautiful, yeah. right, right. But this child is going to suffer, and he's either going to suffer um, the torture of being poisoned mm -hmm. and suctioned mm -hmm. out of his mother's womb or dismembered, dismembered right. and pulled out piece by piece um, while he's still alive in her womb. And so the agony of this child is, um, is united to the agony of, of Jesus. Yes. Now, I, I remember listening to a, a pro-life scientist and um, she was she was saying that ch the child in the womb actually feels more pain than we do. Yes, because the 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 pain inhibitors develop yes. after That's right. the pain receptors. Yes. Yeah, and she used a term called um, down regulation. So, mm -hmm. and um, so it's like if you you know you get a hammer on your thumb. Uh, we have something in us that can suppress that yes. that pain, yes. um, that reaction to the stimulant, but the babies don't have that developed yet, so they feel the pain every step all the way through. Right. Yeah. It's, it's unimaginable uh, for us. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the, the, the agony. Now, of course, this is 
you did not paint this to be the Garden of Gethsemane, That's but it's right. very reminiscent of that, isn't it? Yes. You know, and, yeah. and in fact, I remember being there. Those, I'm sure many of our viewers have been in the Holy Land, and mm -hmm. you can go to the garden and you see these twisted ancient trees yeah. there. And, yeah. and it, this really brings that, that scene. And Jesus praying, if we, if we think of this through the lens of, of his agony, mm -hmm. he had at that moment before his mind, before his human soul, and of course he's a divine person, mm -hmm. all the sins of all the world, and therefore okay. all the abortions, yes. all the pain of these babies, mm -hmm. all the pain that is coming to the mothers and the, mm -hmm. and the fathers and the whole family mm -hmm. and all the rest of us. So we have here the Lord seeing everything, knowing everything, yeah. seeing a, a, and knowing intimately the, the pain of that baby as we were just describing, the agony that the mother is going to go through, uh, and to know that he died for those sins in advance. Yeah. And it, it reminds us, of course, Jesus being here, and of course his halo mm -hmm. reminding us that he's God. Mm -hmm. what, what gets conveyed here, even in the midst of this darkness, mm -hmm. is that infinite mercy. That's right? right. That, that, that That's he right. knew this sin. Mm -hmm. He knew that despair. Mm -hmm. He died for that baby. Mm -hmm. He died for that mother. He died for that abortionist. Yes. Yes. All of them can turn to him now for, for mercy. But there is the agony. It brought him pain just as it brings the baby and the mother That's right. and the rest of us pain. That's right. And here he is, you know, with his halo of the lily, lilies of purity and the, the droplets of blood. And he's united and praying for this this baby because he knows what he, what this child is going to The droplets through. of blood I see them now yes mm -hmm. around the halo mm -hmm. yeah. yeah the droplets of blood yeah. representing the blood of the baby as well as the blood and of our lord He sweat the blood He yeah. sweat the blood yeah. yes yeah. And then I also believe he's praying for the mother because Yes um if she would only turn her, her eyes and soften her heart towards him Right but there's a big rock between them um but even so moss springs up as a symbol of you know life next to him and he's he he's kneeling on one of those those roots that seem to be trying to reach out to trip her and he's kneeling on that on the path but once you know she passes him by in the darkness the roots are just coming on the path and that brings a lot of things to to my mind mm -hmm. and to the mind of all those that that work with women who have had abortions mm -hmm. first of all it, it's amazing how you put the roots there on the rock they look like like monster claws mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. reaching out going to, she's going to, uh, they're the claws of despair they're the claws of abortion mm -hmm. about to devour the baby and the mother mm -hmm. um and they are, are they're stumbling blocks also because once that mother goes by mm -hmm. The, the Lord and yeah. by that opportunity for life, by the walking by the grace that even at that last moment yes. is capable of turning her mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. If she continues walking by, she's going to trip and fall. And what that represents to us is those that have had abortions mm -hmm. will engage through their life in all kinds of self-destructive behavior yeah. uh, as a result of the despair that the abortion brings, the, the destruction of their self-esteem. Mm -hmm. There will be destruction of relationships. Mm -hmm. If she's married, marriages will tend to fall apart. If she's not married, she'll find it more difficult to form future relationships. Mm -hmm. She'll find it more difficult to bond to future children. Mm -hmm. She will make mistakes. She will, and, and these, these roots here over which she's going to stumble if she keeps down that path, mm -hmm. represent all of that. And it also represents that it is a path. It's not yeah. just a, an isolated event, that, yeah. that abortion. Mm -hmm. It puts her on a path mm -hmm. for the rest of her life right. and that she can always find and turn to the Lord for, for mercy and mm -hmm. healing. But there's an entire path of consequences, yes. aren't there? Yes. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it reminds us also of Deuteronomy. The Lord says, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses, mm -hmm. choose life. Notice he says, mm -hmm. you have the choice between life and death, but you don't have the choice of the consequences. Mm -hmm. If you choose life, you'll have blessings. Yeah. But if you choose death, you'll have curses yeah. and 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 this represents it's darker over there mm -hmm. the only light in the picture mm -hmm. is the lord's halo the moon mm -hmm. and the and the baby That's right. once you pass by him it's just dark yeah. and and mm -hmm. and there's all sorts of stumbling blocks so That's it really right, represents Father. that very yes. powerfully thank you that was beautiful reflection on that area that really brought it nice and clear to my mind um yes and speaking about the the background now um, the the shapes and the colors and the images of the background are meant to lend towards you know the state of the soul or the situation and so there's a, a lot of 
the forest is, you know, full of dead trees and jagged rocks. Mm. And on one side of her, there's kind of a valley and a, a pit. And then on the other side, um, in below her her passing shadow, there's a ro- uh, a snake coiled up under the rocks, mm. and a thorn thorny um, weed that is bursting through the the rocks here. So, um, just you know. Uh, symbolism to, to, and then the the like you said, the shapes of the halo, the light, the the moon is casting kind of a cold light over everything, but at the same time, the light of the moon and the halo and the baby create kind of a symmetry and a contrast to all the darkness that is yes. going on around them. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it is beautiful, and you know there have been many thorns and and snakes in her life mm-hmm. up to this point too. Yeah. She may have been betrayed. She may have been forced. Mm-hmm. She was lied to. Mm-hmm. She was lied to by the abortion clinic mm-hmm. where she called to have that appointment. She's yeah. lied to about the baby, about the consequences, mm-hmm. about the about the alternatives. Uh, she's got, um, uh, of course, perhaps the sin of. Um, sexual immorality Mm -hmm. uh, that led to her uh, uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, All kinds of of thorns she's already been through on Mm -hmm. this path. That's right. Uh, And the fog is just sort of symbolism of you know what's blinding her. The confusion, the Mm -hmm. despair, Mm -hmm. uh, the isolation. Um, You know notice we don't see a we don't see a father here do we? You know and Mm -hmm. this is often you know the isolation that she has Mm -hmm. put in. A lot of men make the mistake of saying oh well you know it's up to you Mm -hmm. because I respect they think they're saying the right thing I respect Mm -hmm. your freedom your choice your Mm -hmm. body your rights but really what's that doing it's just putting her more in isolation. It's like you mean to tell me I have to deal with this all Mm -hmm. by myself Mm -hmm. and it doesn't help it Mm -hmm. it increases the temptation to abort. The course of then of course you can't help but notice the two angels and of course this reminds Mm -hmm. us that You know, the mom has a guardian angel, mm-hmm. and so does the baby. So mm-hmm. the guardian angel of the mom is the one right next to her, right? Mm-hmm. And the baby's right. angel is, is behind That's them. That's right. That's and right. so, again, the sanctity of life. God mm-hmm. creates that baby mm-hmm. at conception, mm-hmm. and at that moment assigns okay. to that life a guardian angel. Yeah. So That's God's right. protection, the presence of the angels mm-hmm. are God, uh, showing God's protection and solicitude and care mm-hmm. for that baby and that mother. And of course, then speaks to us mm-hmm. about the solicitude and care we have to have. It reminds me of something St. John Paul II wrote in, in, in the Gospel of Life, mm-hmm. where he says, God has entrusted us all to the care of one another. Mm-hmm. So he's entrusted that life to the, to, the, to the parents. He's entrusted that life to the angels. Mm-hmm. But that speaks to all of us. We have a common responsibility mm-hmm. for that life. It's mm-hmm. not that, like some people will try to tell us, oh, it's none of your business. Yeah. It is our that's business. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. that's our brother, our sister. That's right. And this decision that she's making affects everyone around her, like all that's the right. people in her life, but also on a spiritual level, because uh, the guardian angels are, are real. Her, her, her child's guardian angels are real, and they're going to mm. have to go through this whole thing with her. Well, that's the so, other thing, too. Like It looks like her angel, Mm -hmm. it's almost like both of them Mm-hmm. are seeing now they know already the path mm-hmm. that is ahead yeah after yeah. the abortion yeah. because they're they not could. going to abandon her that's right they're not they going to that. shit mm-hmm. that angel will still be her guardian angel mm-hmm. but now it's going to have to walk with her through the path of despair that's right. and self-destruction yeah. and then hopefully mm-hmm. the path of repentance and healing mm-hmm. yes that exactly. gr- god's grace will break through at some yes. point and, and rejoice uh, and uh, find that peace feel yes yeah. everything will be restored but at this point He's just, he's got his, you know, the for a sad journey, he's got his, you know, w- walking loins squirted for that, and, and the, the garments are changing, and the guardian angels, instead of, you know, the white flowing garments, he's got the dark red, and he's, he's praying for, he's, he's, you know, his head is turned up to heaven and mm. in prayer, and the, guardi- and the guardian angel of the baby has the crown of thorns now, instead of the ah, crown yes. of roses. Instead of roses, yeah, yes. Yeah, and... And uh, just praying for the child. So, wow. Yeah. But every decision, I mean, sometimes, you know, we, we, we think a decision is, you know, made in our, our own personal uh, decision is made in secret or no one will know about it, but it really does affect everything around us. It so, does. Yeah. Like we say about the shock waves of abortion, that's the, right. The, the damage just that's expands right. well, well beyond the that's baby right. and the mother. Yeah. Well, this is amazing. Th- thank you for the uh, ability to convey so many truths mm-hmm. and so many dynamics about the, uh, I don't even like to say decision when we talk about abortion, abortion mm-hmm. decision. 
because it's not. It's 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 the result of despair. Mm -hmm. It's a non-decision. Mm -hmm. It's like I can't do anything else. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. but it all comes back so powerfully in this painting and all the spiritual realities. So uh, mm -hmm. wonderful job. Okay. Well, thank you, Father. Thank you for joining us today, and I just so appreciate all of your insights and reflections uh, with the pro-life message and the art that I've been working on. So and well, I guess we'll um, bring this to a close now. Did you want to say a prayer and give a Let's final do blessing? That. Okay, okay let you. us pray. Okay. Father, we entrust to you all the children in the womb, especially those in imminent danger of abortion. Protect them. Send your angels. Send us to do what we can to save them. Bless all the moms who are in such despair and the dads that they think this is a solution. Clear the fog and lighten their hearts and give them the grace to turn around on that path and go towards mercy, grace, and strength to do what is right. And bless all of us that we may continue to minister healing and hope to those who have had abortions and strength and grace to those who are tempted that they may, together with all of us, choose life. We ask all this through the author of life, the conqueror of death, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Heather. <laughs>